Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In today's video, I am going to discuss four different types of trajectories that you can generate in MATLAB using Robotic System Toolbox and drive KUKA IIWA14 robot on those trajectories. So let's get started. The very first thing is that you need to load the robot in MATLAB's workspace so that it can be used by Robotic System Toolbox. You can do this by using this command. I have already taught you this command in the previous videos. After that, we are going to devise a joint space trajectory. And we know that this robot has seven joints. So we are going to have seven different joint space position vectors. For example, this first vector is for joint number one. That's why I've labeled it as J1. Then similarly, I have it for J2, J3, 4, and up till 7. There are six waypoints. So the first waypoint is this column 0, 0, 0, 0 for all the joints. So at the start, our robot will have 0, 0 position in all the joints. Then the next waypoint is at 10 degrees for joint number 1, 5 degrees for joint number 2, 10 degrees for joint number 3, minus 10 for joint number 4, 15 for joint number 5, 20 and minus 5 for joint number 6 and 7 respectively. So this will be our second waypoint. Similarly, I have defined six waypoints. So we are going to start from 0, 0 position and end up once again at 0, 0 position. You can see that over here at the end, I have zeros. So the last configuration is zeros as well. And now I have combined these seven vectors into one matrix called WP. This will be my waypoint matrix that I'm going to use to generate the trajectories. After that, we have to define the time vector as well because we are going to use this time vector later on. So I've defined from 0 to 5. It means that at 0 time, I will achieve my first waypoint, which is 0, 0. Then at time equals to 1, the second element, I'll achieve the second waypoint. Then I'll achieve the third waypoint over here, fourth waypoint, fifth waypoint, and sixth waypoint at this time. I've divided this time vector by 2, which means that in time, I'll achieve this whole trajectory, or I'll follow this whole trajectory in a total of 2.5 seconds. Then I have defined two other matrices over here, which I'll explain later on. So now let's move to Simulink and see how we can generate the trajectories and move our robot on those trajectories. So in this Simulink environment, I've already made this block, which contains my robot. If you double click on it, you can see the robot inside. I have already explained how you can achieve this thing in my previous video. So I'm not going to go through it. So at the input side, you can see that I'm feeding seven joint angles, which are being generated by this trajectory block. This trajectory block is additionally generating the velocity. So this signal is for velocity and this signal is for acceleration. So let me label those as well. So this is velocity, whereas the second one is acceleration. I'm providing these joint angles to my robot in radians and then I'm just sensing those joint angles, converting them back to degrees and plotting them. So over here in this scope, I'm getting the positions of the robot the velocities which are generated by the uh, trajectory generator block and the accelerations as well. Okay, so dear learners, the first kind of trajectory that I'm going to use over here is I've already placed that thing over here and I've used this trajectory block in my some previous videos as well. This trajectory block is trapezoidal velocity profile trajectory. Let me show you that how you can place this block over here. You can double click anywhere and write trapezoidal and you can see that it is over here. Click on it and you'll get this block. You can place it over here like this. You have to supply the time to this block and it will generate these things. Now double click on this block, go inside and you have to specify the waypoints. We have already made the waypoint matrix. So I can specify WP over here. So it is already in the workspace. Then we can specify some parameters over here. These parameters will dictate that what kind of trajectory we are going to get. So I'm going to go with the simplest one with one number of parameter and the parameter I'm going to select is the end time. And over here, I'm going to specify 0.5. This means that every waypoint will be achieved in 0.5 seconds. So first waypoint will start from zero seconds. The next waypoint will be achieved in the next 0.5 seconds. The next waypoint in further 0.5 seconds and so on. The type of trajectory block which we are using is called trapezoidal velocity profile trajectory. Technically, it is also called linear segments of parabolic blends, or for short, LSPB.
The important point for this type of trajectory is that the velocity profile which we are going to get will be a trapezoidal in shape, which means it will have some constant acceleration. Then we are going to have a flat velocity line that is zero acceleration portion. And at the end, we are going to have a negative acceleration slope. So the robot is going to start from one way point, accelerate with a constant acceleration, then move with a constant velocity for some time, and then it will start decelerating with a constant deceleration and will stop at the waypoint. So at every waypoint, we are going to get a zero velocity. So let's run this thing and see that how our robot moves. So this is how the robot is moving. You can see that it is stopping at every waypoint and it is then going to the next waypoint. To analyze the motion more completely, let us go to the scope which we have placed over here. So over here, you can see that the first graph is for the position, the second one is for the velocity and the last one is for acceleration. In the velocity portion, you can see that all the joints, all the seven joints, they are having trapezoidal velocities from one waypoint to the other waypoint. Whereas if you see the acceleration profile, then you can see that it, every joint has a constant acceleration for some period, then zero acceleration, then a constant deceleration. These kind of trajectories will produce impulsive jerks. A jerk is defined as the rate of change of acceleration. And if your system or your robot has some flexibility in its structure, then an impulsive jerk will induce some vibrations. So these kind of trajectories are recommended for rigid kind of robots, which don't show any flexibility. Now let's move on to the other kind of trajectory. So I'm going to delete this block, and now I'm going to double click over here and load another block, which is for polynomial trajectory. The next three kind of trajectories can be generated using this block. So I'm going to generate all those three trajectories one by one. So I've connected this block in place of trapezoidal velocity profile generator block. And now you can double click on it. The very first thing is once again, we have to specify the waypoints. So we already have that. So this is our waypoint matrix. The next thing is at what time every waypoint should be achieved. So we have already made a time matrix. So I can load that vector over here. And then in the method section, I have three options. I can generate a cubic polynomial, a quintic polynomial, or a B spline. So these are the three trajectories which this block can generate. So first of all, I'm going to go with a cubic polynomial. Cubic polynomial means that this block is going to generate a cubic equation or a cubic curve to define the position from one waypoint to the other waypoint. So if the position graph is a cubic polynomial from one waypoint to the other waypoint, it means velocity, which is the derivative of the position, will be a quadratic graph. So now it is not going to be a straight trapezoidal or something else. It is going to be a quadratic graph. And if the velocity is a quadratic graph, then the acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity, is going to be a linear graph. So we are going to have linear velocity. And if we see the jerk, which is the derivative of the acceleration, then that will be a constant graph. So first of all, we are going to go with cubic polynomial. Over here, we have the liberty to assign what velocity boundary conditions this trajectory should have, which this means that at every waypoint, what should be the velocity of a particular joint? So we can define these velocity boundary conditions joint by joint. So we have seven joints and we have six waypoints. So we need a matrix of seven by six. So if I specify this thing, zeros seven comma six, then it means that at every waypoint, every joint is going to have a zero velocity. So let's see that how this comes out. Then we can change these boundary conditions later on. So now I'm going to simulate this thing and let's see how the robot runs. Okay, so this is how the robot is running now. We can't see much of a difference over here because the robot is stopping at every waypoint. Let's see the corresponding graph. We can see a clear difference over here. In the velocity portion, you can see that from every waypoint to the next waypoint, the velocity graph is a parabola, which is a quadratic graph. Whereas for positions from one waypoint to the other waypoint, every graph is a cubic graph. And for accelerations, you can see that we are having linear accelerations. Still, there are some impulses between the accelerations. So in the jerk graph, we are going to see some jerks. Moving on, we can define non-zero velocity conditions as well, so that our robot never stops at a particular waypoint. So how you can do that? Now let's go back to that file, this initial file, 
and beneath this time vector I have defined this matrix. This matrix is the velocity boundary conditions. It has seven rows, one for every joint and six columns, one for every waypoint. So you can see that the first column is 0, 0, 0 and all the zeros, which means that at the very first waypoint, the velocities should be zero. Then the next column is 1, 1 and this whole matrix is being multiplied with 10, which means I'm going to get the next column as 10. It means that every joint when passing through the second waypoint should have a velocity of 10 degrees per second. Similarly, for the next waypoint, which is the third one, fourth one, and the fifth one. So all the joints are going to have a velocity of 10 degrees per second when passing through all these waypoints. And at the end, when at the last waypoint, the velocity will be zero once again. I have defined a similar matrix for acceleration as well. So I'm going to use this thing in the next type of trajectory. So now let's get back over here. Double click this polynomial trajectory block. And over here, now I'm going to define the velocity boundary conditions as this matrix, which I have defined in the workspace. Now the robot should not stop at any waypoint or it should have some non-zero velocity at every waypoint. So now let's run it and see how the robot moves. So this is how the robot is moving. You can see that it is not stopping at any point. This thing can be further confirmed from the graph. So in these velocity graphs, you can see that at the very first waypoint, the velocity of every joint is zero. Whereas in the second waypoint, the velocity of every waypoint is not zero. It is somewhere over here, which is 10 because we have defined it to be 10. And then over here, once again, it is 10, 10, 10. And at the last waypoint, it's once again zero. So if you want your robot not to stop at any waypoint, then these this kind of trajectory can be beneficial for you. Now let's move on to the third kind of trajectory. Third kind of trajectory is called quintic trajectory. To define this trajectory, this block generates a polynomial of fifth order. And the advantage this kind of trajectory gives us is that apart from having conditions on velocity, we can have conditions on accelerations as well. So as now the position is being defined with a quintic polynomial, that is the polynomial with a degree of five, the velocity will be defined with a polynomial having a degree of four and acceleration will be defined with a po cubic polynomial and jerk will now will be a quadratic polynomial. So as I have already defined this acceleration boundary conditions, I can load that thing over here and now at every waypoint, apart from having some velocity, I also have some defined acceleration. So that's it. Now let's run this thing and see how different the robot moves. So this is how the robot is now moving. Once again, you can see that it is not stopping at any waypoint, but you cannot see much of a difference over here. So let's move to the graphs. Over here, you can see that now the velocity graphs are not parabolas or quadratic. They are a higher order graphs and the acceleration graphs have become much more beautiful. If I can zoom over here, we can see that when the first waypoint is achieved, the acceleration is not zero. So this is the zero point, but the accelerations are somewhere over here. And I have defined the accelerations to be at 20 degrees per second square. To achieve non-zero accelerations at waypoints, you can see that the accelerations have increased and so are the velocities. So you might notice that the robot is moving a bit faster between the waypoints, but every waypoint is being achieved at the same time, which has been defined. So till now we have discussed three kinds of trajectories the trapezoidal velocity trajectory, the cubic trajectory, and the quintic trajectory. Now let's move to the last one, which is the most smooth one. So for that, once again, you have to double click on this polynomial trajectory block. And from this drop down menu, you have to select this B spline. B spline stands for basis spline. And as soon as you select this kind of trajectory, you can see that the things have changed. Now you only need to define two things. Number one, the waypoint matrix, and number two, the time interval. Over here, the time interval means when should, the, when should the first waypoint and the last waypoint should be achieved. All the intermediate waypoints, they don't need to have time associated with them. Because what this B spline trajectory is going to do is, it is going to join every waypoint with a straight line. That is a straight line from first waypoint to the second, then another straight line from second to the third, and similarly between all the waypoints. Then it will start from the first waypoint and will touch only those straight lines and will go to the last waypoint. So in position profile, 
only the first and the last waypoint will be achieved, whereas all others are only guiding the robot or guiding the trajectory towards the last point. These kind of trajectories are the smoothest ones, and we will see that in a bit. So as soon as you select this thing and press OK, you can see that the diagram over here has changed. Now this gray trajectory is being generated. And you can see that if this is the first waypoint and this one is the second waypoint, then a third waypoint, then every waypoint is joined by a straight line. And the trajectory which is generated is just touching that straight line. So it means that the trajectory is confined by the convex hull, which has been generated by all the waypoints. So now let's see how the robot moves now. So this is how the robot is now moving. You can see that it is not going to any waypoint or it is not stopping anywhere. It is just starting from the first waypoint and getting back to the last one. Now let's move towards the graph. Over here you can see that the graphs have changed too much. Only in the position graph you can see that the first waypoint which was 0, 0, 0 and the last waypoint which was once again 0, 0, 0, those are being achieved. Whereas in between we don't know where the robot is going but we are having quite smooth motions because velocities are not changing abruptly and we are having very nice linear accelerations. So now to summarize these things, if we view all the robots motions simultaneously, then you can see that you are seeing the jerks or the stoppage of the robot very clearly in the first one where it was trapezoidal velocity. But for the last, which was B spline, the robot's motion is quite smooth. And for the cubic and quintic, Although you can place conditions on velocity and accelerations to be non-zero, but still you can see that the robot tries to stop or has some jerks, but still it is quite smooth. And if we see the graphs of all these things together, then this first graph is for the trapezoidal velocity, where you can see the trapezoidals in velocities. The second one is for cubic, where you have a quadratic velocity. So we have parabolas over here, and we have cubic splines in the position graphs. And then this column is for quintic trajectory. So we have a quintic polynomial for position and we have a fourth order velocity graph from one waypoint to the other waypoint. And you can see that it is a bit smoother than the cubic trajectory. For the last B spline trajectory, you can see that the positions are only achieved for the last and the first waypoint, whereas the velocities are quite smooth. They don't have some changes in them. They are smoothly varying from one side to the other side and for the accelerations, we have linear accelerations at different segments. So dear learners, these are the four type of trajectories that Robotic System Toolbox of MATLAB can generate. And I hope that you can use these trajectories in your applications and simulate your robots on these trajectories. If you have any queries, then I'm always available through YouTube comments and my email address. So thank you and take care.